Today we're going to learn how to insert a footer inside a website. And the way we're going to do this is we want to make sure the footer always stays at the bottom of the website. So as you guys can see in my example here, I just have a piece of text inside my content. And because of this, essentially inside a typical website, it would actually end up looking more like this. So the footer actually starts right underneath the actual content inside the page. So we can actually use CSS in order to keep the footer at the bottom of the website, like I have in here. And as soon as the content becomes so big that it actually reaches the bottom of the page, it's actually going to start pushing down the footer. So the footer is actually not fixed to the bottom of the page. It will in fact move as soon as the content reaches the bottom of the page. So we're going to go ahead and accomplish this fairly easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go inside my text editor. Now this is what I was talking about. This is a very basic, let's say a front page that has a section inside the body tag. And then the footer starts right underneath the section. So this would actually make the footer do this. So in order to get this other effect here, we're going to go ahead and open up a new document. So this was just to show you guys an example. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up a new document. I'm going to save it inside some kind of folder as index.html. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, save it as style.css. Then inside my index file, I'm going to go ahead and include just the basic HTML tags that we need to have inside a website. Let's say this is actually a front page because we call the index.html. And inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and link to my style sheet. Again, you guys should know how to do this by now, so I'm not going to go too much into detail about how to actually link to a style sheet. So I'm going to say style.css. Inside my body tags, in order to get this effect where the footer stays at the bottom of the page, we're going to go ahead and create a div tag. Now what this div tag is going to do is, well, first of all, we should give it some kind of ID. I'm going to call this one container. You guys can call it something else. If you have plans in the future to call other elements inside your website container, you can call it something else. Um, so you don't have to call this specific name. Now inside the container, we're going to go ahead and create another div. And in a second, I'll explain what exactly we're doing here and why we need to create these divs inside divs. So we're going to give this one an ID as main. So underneath these, I'm going to go and create the footer we're going to have at the bottom of our website, like so. Now I'm also going to go ahead and give this footer a ID, which I'm going to set as footer, like so. So what we did here is basically the first div we have up here called container is going to be 100% of the height of our browser. So right now this container takes off the entire height of the website we're inside of. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, so this one, since it's 100% height, the footer is actually going to jump down below what we're viewing inside the website when we open up the website. So we can actually see the footer when we load the page. Then the second div we have inside this container is going to be the one that contains all the content of our website. So once this div down here becomes so big that it actually goes below the height of our browser, it's going to start increasing the container div height. So it's going to push down the footer even more when we reach a certain height. And now you might be asking, well, if we can't see the footer when we load the page and it's just going to keep moving down so we can actually see it when we do get more content, then how do we actually see the footer? Let's go ahead and jump into the styling so I can show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and save the document here. I'm going to go inside my style sheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say we want to style basically everything inside the website because we have some default margins inside our browsers that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to say we have a margin set to zero. Then I'm going to do the same for the padding, set it to zero, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and style our HTML and body tags inside our page. So we're going to say HTML, comma, body, curly brackets, and then we want to set the height to 100%. And the reason we do this is because we can actually set the container ID to 100% height if the HTML and the body tag does not have a height as 100%. So we can actually detect the height of the browser if we do not do this, okay? Underneath the HTML and body styling, we're gonna go ahead and style our ID called container, which is going to be the one that covers the entire height of our browser. So we're going to say we have a height well, actually a minimum height, like so. 
set to 100%. Then under the container styling, we're going to go ahead and style the main ID. So we're going to say ID main, open up the curly brackets. Then we're going to set a overflow to auto, which is something we need in order to actually get a scroll bar when we do get much more content inside our page. So because we're actually doing this thing with the container up here, we need to make sure we actually keep an overflow auto inside the main ID. Then underneath the overflow, we're going to go ahead and set a padding bottom. Now this padding bottom is going to be the height of our actual footer. So right now we need to decide what kind of height do we need to have the footer as. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a footer set to, let's say, 100 pixels, which I know is quite a lot. But just in our case here, let's set it to 100 pixels. Then we're going to go ahead and style the footer at the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and say we have an ID set to footer, curly brackets. Then inside the footer, we're going to go ahead and give it some kind of background color so we can actually see what's going on inside the footer. So we're going to say we have a background color. I'm going to set it to black just so we can see it. Then I'm going to go ahead and set a position relative. Then I'm going to go ahead and set a height, which is going to be 100 pixels because that's what we decided inside the main styling. So we're going to go ahead and say 100 pixels. Then I'm going to go ahead and set a margin top, which is going to be set to a negative. Now the reason we're doing this is because right now the container is 100% height, meaning that we do actually get the footer push below the view of our browser when we do actually open up the website. So in order to get it back inside the view, you know, at the bottom of the page, we need to make sure we move the footer upwards the same amount that the height is of the footer. So right now we can set this one to a negative 100 pixels. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a clear both at the bottom, like so. Now if I were to go ahead and go back inside my browser and just go ahead and take our index file, load it so we can actually see it. You guys can see that now we have a footer at the bottom of our website. And right now, if we were to actually insert some content inside our index file, let's say inside the main div box we have here, I'm just going to go ahead and write some text. I'm going to say blah, 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 save it, refresh the browser, and you guys can see that we do have some text in here, and the content, or at least the footer, is still at the bottom of the website. If we were to go ahead and say, well, let's actually give our main a background color just to illustrate what we're actually doing in here, I'm going to say we have a background color as red. Then you guys can actually see the bottom padding of our main div, which right now is 100 pixels, plus the text we have inside the main container. So the reason we decide to get this 100 pixel padding at the bottom is that once we do actually get enough content to make it go to the bottom of the page, we need to make sure that the content does not disappear underneath the footer which it will do if we do not have this padding here because we moved the footer 100 pixels upwards on top of the content we have inside the browser. So we need to make sure we also have a padding inside the, you know, the wrapper or the main that contains all the content inside our website. Just to demonstrate this to you guys, when I do actually give this main a height set to much more than my browser height, uh, the content is gonna stay right on top of the footer where the padding here is gonna disappear underneath the footer. So if we were to go back inside my styling and say we have a main here, I'm gonna give it a height just to demonstrate to 2000 pixels, just to exaggerate a little bit. If we were to refresh the browser, you guys can see when I scroll down, right click my browser and inspect it so you guys can actually see the padding. Let's actually move out of device view. If we were to hover inside my ID main, you guys can see that the content inside of here does have a bluish tint and then the footer has a greenish tint, meaning that the padding inside the main ID is inside the footer. So if we were to have content that went all the way down to the bottom, it's not gonna jump underneath the footer, which is why we need to have this padding. So I hope this gave you guys some kind of idea about why we need to style it the way we do. And you know, just doing it this way will accomplish this effect that you guys want to have inside your website. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.